We're going to jump now right to Newton's equation for universal gravitation. So, namely, Newton's law for gravity. Negative g mass 1 mass 2 divided by r squared, where let's break it down kind of piece by piece here a little bit. So, the gravitational force, as it says here, is always attractive. It's always pulling two masses together. So please make sure you add this, this bit to your notes. The negative out in front here is associated with the r hat. So the negative r hat is direction radially inward. So again, please get this in. Gravity is always attractive, never repulsive. So the negative goes with the r hat radially inward. Okay. Second statement. Well, it says that the force due to gravity is the same on both mass 1 and mass 2. Namely, any mass 1 and mass 2 will exhibit this gravitational force, hence universal. So even if you have astronaut 1, an astronaut, too, floating in outer space. Let's take them away from any other larger masses that would influence uh, the, the net force. So we have them isolated in outer space all by themselves. The, there would be an attractive force pulling them together based on g, mass 1, mass 2, divided by their center of mass to center of mass distance squared, and then hence it is in inverse square relationship. So the gravitational force is not constant. It is, and this is worth repeating, an inverse square relationship. So as the center of mass to center of mass distance increases, 1 on r squared, we square the distance, and then 1 on r squared gives us a small gravitational force as that center of mass to center of mass distance grows. Well, what are the consequences of this? Well, the first, the capital G, let's, let's finish with our, our equation. The capital G is a gravitational constant that Henry Cavendish measured in 1798. And to give you some perspective, this was over a hundred years after Newton published his famous treatise, his work, the Principia, uh, giving us this mathematical relationship, which, by the way, it was math he mathematically showed it to be consistent with the astronomical uh, data that we had on the moon moving around uh, the Earth, the planets uh, in motion, Kepler's law, the elliptical orbits, which we're going to get to. And if you have interest in the mathematics of showing how this is consistent with the motion of the planets. I've attached a digital copy of a really good article along with our materials. Um, the article is called Path of the Planets. It's by uh, Rachel Hall and Paul uh, Higson. It repeats uh, a, a proof, a geometrical proof, that uh, Richard Feynman, a uh, famous physicist, um, showed that uh, how the proof, how this law is consistent with the motion of the planets. If you have interest in the mathematics of where the equation came from, we are not looking at the derivation of the equation mathematically in our course here, but we will be looking at the consequences of the equation. One of the consequences of the equation that we must have is that it would be consistent with what we know to be true here near the surface of the Earth. So that's the last bit that I have here to get into our notes, is if, for this calculation, we are going to assume that we know the radius of the Earth and the mass of the Earth, and just for a historical perspective, Newton definitely knew the radius of the Earth because that was known, measured by the ancient Greeks, believe it or not, um, some one, two hundred years uh, B.C., uh, the Greeks were able to do that. The mass of the Earth, however, was not known. So Newton's mathematical proof was based on ratios, not the actual uh, mass of the Earth, um, in terms of uh, corresponding to the, the data that we, we had uh, for the planets at the time. But if we look at the consistency 
of Newton's equation with what we know to be true here on Earth, we will see that that consistency is definitely in place. And please make sure uh, that you get this uh, into your notes. Now, the force acting on any mass, according to Newton's second law, is mass times acceleration. And remember we said the force due to gravity was independent of the mass? Uh, I'm sorry, the acceleration due to gravity is independent of the mass. The force due to gravity is directly dependent on the mass, which it is in Newton's law. So consistency. The m's will cancel. The acceleration due to gravity will be independent of the mass. Now, it's not, it's not going to be constant, but it will be constant as long as the center of mass to center of mass distance remains the same to a very good approximation. That's true near the surface of the Earth, since the Earth is so big and our radius or whatever object we're dropping is so small by comparison to that radius. It's essentially the center of mass to center of mass distance. And we can see that we do indeed get an acceleration due to gravity that corresponds to what we know to be experimentally verifiable to be true, negative 9.8 meters per second squared. And I did skip over this, this last comments in the middle, which I absolutely want you to put into your notes. We will see that Henry Cavendish's experiment uh, in 1798 was uh, amazing because of the 10 to, mi to the minus 11, the smallness of, of that number. Think of what the state of technology in the world was like in, in 1800, essentially, 1798, and the ability to be able to make a measurement to 11 decimal places. Amazing measurement. Uh, we'll, we'll talk more about that at the very end of our unit uh, as we wrap things up. But the other important thing to remember is that the force due to gravity in general, is small because of this 10 to the minus 11. So to really see macroscopic effects from gravity, you really need big mass, right? Like the Earth or the Sun or, or, or something cosmic in its mass to really see a large gravitational force. We're not so much worried about the gravitational force M1 on M2 between people around us throwing us off balance because we have the huge Earth here on Earth sitting beneath us, pulling us all downward. So a lot more here to go through. We'll be, we'll be looking at the applications to uh, Newton's uh, new law for universal gravitation, uh, largely uh, to satellites, which we're going to begin on our next page. Uh, but uh, in general as well. So a lot to do here. Uh, hopefully it's uh, giving us some new insight into how uh, gravity works, and we'll continue on this path.